Okay, today we got 9.6. Let's get a no searching problem. Oh, we're showing SOS now. Uh, I'm going to assume it's baseband CPU with U1 V1 type fault. It's not a guarantee, but we'll crack it open, have a look, and see how we get. This phone does have a bend in it, so that it uh, doesn't really bode well for it. It has been repaired before by me. I know, because it's got the coloured markings on the screws. Here you can see the bend is uh, reasonably severe. It's not the worst. Interesting that it's happening from here though, which is pretty much where the base bend is. So that's that's my guess for today. The board does have a slight kink around here. You can feel see rocks on the board. Here, yeah, we're going to take off our favourite shield. Ah, I hate doing this. This one here. To be honest, the best trick I've found is to just go hot, go fast. I was almost about to give up then. Alright, well, at this point, we just need to get our baseband CPU off. And that's always fun. You can't grab them, lift them off, there's too much tension. You have to come in under here and flip them up. Okay, we're going to hot air wick the pads. Drop the temperature down at least this time. Uh, U1 and V1, or actually, I think it's U1 V1. Are you a lifting pad down there, or is that? Yeah, I think that's actually it's not lifting. That is just uh, not all the solder got wicked up. looks perfectly good otherwise. So we're going to scratch these back and drop in a couple of little wires. It's going to give it a bit of a clean up first. My hands are a little jittery today, it's not what I want. And this blade is quite sharp.
I'm gonna put down some leaded. I kind of overshot there a little bit, so I'm gonna to have to hot air that out. The reason why I prefer to hot air it out now is so that I don't have to deal with the bumps later. I really only want... Oh, I may as well get this one down here as well. Yeah, you're gone. Now, I might get yelled at for uh, messing with things, but I just really want to push this wire just up slightly. It may cause myself more grief, but yeah, well. happy with that. <laughs> and just leave it alone. I'm gonna wash down. And the next thing I want to do is put a teeny tiny amount of uh, conformal coating there. Now I'm not kidding when I say tiny. That's probably a bit much. I'll be able to scrape a bit of that back. Uh, the reason why I don't want a lot of coating there is because when the chip sits down it uh, in the past what I've found is if that uh, coating goes over the top of those wires in terms of thickness it's then too thick for the chip to sit down properly and the balls don't make proper contact so we're going to UV this now Oh, that looks pretty good. We're just going to scratch back that little bit of green that's sitting there at the pad. Yeah, that should do the trick nicely. And we're going to give this the hot wick treatment as well. So some of those pads are going to need a little bit of assistance. 
they're not missing, they're just corroded a little bit. Yeah, I think we're good to get our stencil on and install some new balls. And there's our ball. Hopefully we should be able to float that back on. Beautiful. Just give it a little bit of a heat so we can spread it evenly. Alright, <clears throat> All right, now for the most nerve wracking part which is Getting the base band back down, properly aligned. And that feels pretty close to where I want it. I'll have a look at another six, just in case. Alright, according to this one here, we're actually a little low. It seems that uh, top corner, this here, should line up that, and those pads for U1, V1 are just under there. Alright, good thing we checked. This can be a bit of a problem when you don't do this every single day. You uh, make mistakes like that. I mean, the balls will self correct to a degree, but you don't want to go that far. Okay, so now we're going up too high. Not that we want it perfect, perfect, to be honest. No, I think we're pretty damn good there. Okay, let's roll with that.
Well, I guess we'll power it up and see how we go. So I might just first check to see if it hasn't got a short limit it to 130 milliamp. Well, we're only showing 12, so that's a good sign. I suppose the proper way I should have done that is to actually just diode measure the lines, but oh well. Well, at least we got an Apple logo. If you got an Apple logo, you got a chance. There we have got the person's. Let's see. You can see here that it's picked up the Telstra system. So that's good. Looks like it's got cool forwarding on. Okay, so we've got modem firmware. It's picking up a whole bunch of messages. It's picking up the local network. So pretty much consider that a fix.